Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, June 23rd, 2024. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast. has been entering length episode number uh, 743. And, um, yes, I'm fresh meat. Why don't you try to come... Enjoy me. Please. Well. Well. <laughs> I'm not pick, I'm not that picky anymore. <laughs> anymore. <laughs> anymore. Wow. Perhaps we'll talk about that. Gary, what are we talking about? Mm-hmm. Um so this topic came about <laughs> pun intended because <laughs> because of social media and the accessibility to adult content uh-huh. it got me thinking about oh I'm sorry the availability <laughs> today of information and like imagery all that stuff compared to when we were younger so it got me wondering if our taste in men has changed or is the same or slightly changed slightly modified from when we were younger because it, in in rough estimate we as co-hosts came about for determining what we liked what we were drawn to, what we were interested in the 80s. Possibly the 90s. I'm presuming some formation of that came about in the 80s with, you know, puberty and self-identification and that kind of stuff. So, you know, now fast forward to where we are. It's a couple decades later. And it made me wonder if the type of men, you know, that... Uh, in essence, we did not know this term back then, distracted us, <laughs> still do today, or if that's changed. And is that something that we would chalk up to the passage of time? Like, as we've gotten older, have our tastes changed with the time, with with the world, with culture, or is it still certain things that bring that out of you? Um, and actually, I want to give some recognition to um, over on Blue Sky. Yes, I'm over on there mm. as a, a social media site. There is a profile that I've been following called the Bear Magazine Preservation Project. Yes, oh. follow them too. Um, it's at bearmagazine.bsky.social. And what they do is this one person who lives over on the West Coast has been high quality scanning all of the Bear Magazine print copies and posting their images online as like kind of an archive. And so it's interesting to see all these images from back then. And this was like the one piece of media that put an image, um, made a template, so to speak, for the community. And... I, I'm proud of the fact that seeing this project go, that there were lots of different body types shown. I will say the one thing that wasn't really promoted in it was bigger boys. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that was a product of the time in the 80s and 90s, because I don't think there was any really media that showed anybody like 
um, of the Thickums and above. I think that was so, more on the uh, their spinoff magazine, Grizzly. Right. Like, I, I think that was kind of where that ended up falling in. But I... And so it got me thinking about, like... Because some of these images, like, I remember these photos. I mean, I have a whole collection of the magazine. And um, so it, it just made me wonder, like, do we still find these images alluring? If you saw that same person today in today's like parlance, it, like, timey-wimey, as in they haven't aged. But, like, if you were to see that same individual today, okay. would it still turn your head and or, like yank your crank or whatever so i don't know like i mean I, I feel like my taste has changed but i don't know if that's 100 percent certain because then i see individuals that were like that would have caught my eye when i was half my age or younger and <laughs> you know that's that's a thing so i'm like well maybe not hmm hmm so, David, I honestly thought a little bit about you when I was posing this as, as the, like, putting the egg of this topic, because oh. for the legacy of this podcast, we have poked fun at the fact that you like daddies and, like, you married one. I mean, you married you married a Santa Claus, for God's sake. So, <laughs> I mean, fact. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. don't be jealous, Jeff. So, I mean, the, the, <laughs> the thing is that... Um, like it, it made me wonder if like, cause I don't know this, I guess about you, if like when you were like developing your sense of self and what you like was, were drawn to, if like that, like that imagery, that stuff kind of got planted that young or if that kind of developed along the way that you discovered, like once you kind of self-identified and figured things out and was like, oh, like it don't have to be with like people my age. It can be with individuals that are older. In fact, it could be with people who really like bring something out of me. Right. So long story short ish. Um, I think I've always been attracted to older guys mm -hmm. um, for as long as I can remember. Like I'm, I'm trying to go back to, you know, that blossoming of of uh, of me and finding out myself and um, although weirdly enough, my first experiences with someone was technically he's technically young he was technically younger than me, but um, I think I've often been attracted to maturity and older men, and that has kind of always been set. Mm -hmm. um, the range has always I think has changed. Um, as I have gotten older, I will kind of admit to that. Like I, I used to have a major cutoff at like 50, 55, 60. Like I was, it was, that was sort of the end. Mm -hmm. um, and any, like not necessarily physically, you know, this was a mint, like a, like if you had a profile on like the gay, gay.com or whatever, you know, when you mentioned you were older it, or older than like 50 or 55, I was kind of like, mm, I'm probably not going to be as interested. And that's me. And I will admit that ageism <laughs> at right. the time. Um, but I, I've, I do know it has almost always been hairier men. I think that has always been the case. Even when I didn't know that that was a thing, it was a thing. Mm -hmm. um the so a, a a a quick side story because actually um some pictures just reminded me of it um back with when i was in high school i went to um this program called governor scholars and it was i think four or five weeks away from home i was actually close to here i was at nku north Kentucky university i was on their campus um and it was a way for us, you know, nerds or geeks or whatever you want to call it, um, to experience college life and um, go to classes and do all of those things. And we learned a lot. Um, 
But one of the main things I got access to was um, internet. While we had some internet at home, we didn't have um, didn't have a great computer at the time. So, uh, and we didn't have a printer. So uh, I remember specifically, like the Bear like Preservation Project, one of those, there was an image, and I'm thinking it's Jack Ratcliffe. I'm pretty sure it was Jack Ratcliffe. But there were images I remember specifically, like grabbing from like sites or whatever and printing them and printing them really quickly and then grabbing them off the printer and, and, and tucking them away because it was my only real opportunity at the time to see um, men that I found attractive and um yeah yeah uh so i think my it, 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 I, I used to blame, say it was maturity like it was always been i, I preferred a mature person i preferred a mature guy because those were the guys that tend to be more interested in me not that there wasn't interest in guys my age but for the most part it was um those older gentlemen that I would find online that would talk to me and, and value um, my maturity. And that's who I used to usually would hook up with is usually guys older than me. But when you're in college, especially like you <laughs> and you're free and you're not at home anymore. Um, when those shackles are placed off, you kind of, take what you can get sometimes and and sometimes that can be the the guy next door um in a dorm next door or whatever mm. okay that's yeah. fair yeah 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 jeff what about you do you think that your tastes have changed or has it been cons pretty consistent or Yes and no. And, and okay. I have my reasonings. I think the men that uh, I found was attracted to, like my, the types of men that, that I uh, find attractive has basically grown. So like I started off, like my experiences, hey, my dad worked at IBM, so we always had a computer. And then internet came around and we got just the prodigy and then things upgraded to full on internet to, to, to where, where I could go to news groups and, and look at erotic profiles. Our computer was downstairs in our, our family rooms. We had a living room upstairs Lucky. and family room downstairs. Um, Lucky. Mm -hmm. You so, had a warning system. Yeah. <laughs> Except for the fact that my brother, my brother's bedroom was like right in an eye shot, um, so if mm. he ever opened the door, he could have caught me. Um, but uh, so I, I think it was like kind of just exploring. Like I knew for certain I was not into the typical gay, yield winks, and and so like I was browsing news group and i got the the erotica men and then i found bears i'm like Ooh. and then i'm like oh, i don't really like those those muscle bears i don't like that those six packs uh i'd rather have a keg and it, that's when i learned i like study men like men with mm -hmm. a belly mm -hmm. and i can define like the the things that like I find very attractive about some people. You know, a couple of things that I did learn learn was I do not like long hair at all. Okay. I, I do not find it an attractive anyway. Um they could be beautiful every other way and and I would be able to recognize that and maybe find them attractive if they have like their hair tied up in a bun or something like that. Or a ponytail and everything's pulled back so from the front it looks all short and i'm like "Ooh, that's hot and then then they turn their head and i see the longer hair and i'm like Ew. um but i did learn that I, that i have a thing for 
about hair. That's the thing I always, and I, I'm pretty sure I've always had that. Um, but yeah. I, as I've grown older, my, I've broadened my spectrum of what I find attractive. Like they don't necessarily have to have a big old belly. Um, they can be a, a little bit slimmer, but, uh, still with, you know, a little bit of padding, right? Um, uh, and I mean, although even that ends up being like, that's the thing that I've made somebody more attractive, but I can still find people that are attractive with more of that muscular look to it. But mm -hmm. they, they have other factors that are enjoying, like a beautiful beard, a bald head, but they may be more, a little more chiseled. Um, and it just, the range that it has, like, even, like, within the past, like, five, six years, maybe, like, thinking about a, a trans man, I, 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 and I think I even expressed it at one time in the show, I was like, ew, that's gross, I don't want to see anything to do with <laughs> pussy, and nowadays, I'm like, look, if they have other factors, I don't really care. Um, hmm. I, 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 I do find a lot of trans men attractive, and sometimes I am looking for porn. I'm looking. I sometimes even try to search out something. The only problem is that most uh, uh, trans porn that I can find are not the type of men that I enjoy. So mm -hmm. it's difficult. Yeah, we need more more chubby bear, bear uh, trans men porn. <laughs> Fair, yeah. Uh, I was thinking. Yeah, it's it's just this the this spectrum of what I had has I started off relatively narrow, and now it I've just expand what I find attractive and you would want to play with. Or even have a relationship with. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's sort of maybe a given. I don't know about you, Gary, but I kind of agree with that. Like over the years, that expansion has happened in some ways, mostly due to, I think, experiencing not just, say, like images and porn, what have you, but just like actually experiencing. Um, other individuals and, and, and engaging with people and actually in a way getting to know people more. Um, and sounds weird, but like just giving somebody a chance that has expressed interest and, and seeing if maybe you would enjoy it. And then you find out you do and you go, okay, well, that's cool. Let's give the next person a chance. Let's give the other person, you know, the next one or next person. And then um, also just, in, for me, it's been um, eye-opening, engaging with other cultures, as it were, and seeing other people and um, experiencing beyond the sexual other ways to be attracted to someone. Mm -hmm. So that, I think, has also expanded my horizons, as it were. Um, like I was thinking I've I was attracted to bears before I knew what bears were like because um, I didn't really find out about the bear community until I moved here in a sense I think it was always something that I found myself interested in and attracted to but didn't have a word for it until I moved here yeah and I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure Great. I learned earlier than you did because I had better access to bears <laughs> yeah yeah I mean um well, hmm. maybe in, uh, no. I'm trying to think. I was trying to think about college. I'm trying to think about did I ever get into bear? Were there bear groups? And I don't think so. Are bear like chat rooms or what have you? And I don't think I ever got into those. Mm -hmm. uh, I just remember the male for male ones. Those are the ones that the main ones that are popping in my head, but not the. Um, 
not a specific bear or heavy men or chubby men type groups. Uh, right. Uh, by the way, um, I just noticed something. I I had to look it up because I was curious. But uh, do you know the site Bigger City? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I just looked at how long ago I had joined. Yeah. It was. 25 years ago. Mm. I'm like, well, oh, wow. So you well, joined just, in 99. Just think, if, like, if you'd had a baby I was in back college then. at that time, so. Yeah. You know, I, was in yeah. That, I was 18 years old, if, it, if this is accurate enough. I was 18 years old. I was in college. So I definitely joined for my college dorm room. <laughs> can't i had a site i had an account i just don't even know if i still have access to it it's been so long i don't how do you do oh never mind i found it <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna be like how long ago did i join because it wasn't that long ago i know that okay uh mine is a dozen years hmm. Hmm. i was a latecomer to it like i i didn't my concern about joining bigger city was i didn't want to Oh. join the site and find myself like being the object of a lot of guys that I wasn't interested in. Mm. Like my concern was, is that I was going to have a lot of guys be interested in me and I wasn't going to be interested in them. So I didn't go on the site for many, many, many years. Um, and then finally ended up joining it. I think they'll like check it out as a platform and just kind of see how they operated and what things were on there. And, and inappropriately curious to see who else locally might have a profile. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I had I, I I just checked and I it I don't think my profile's there anymore because I must have deleted it at some point. Um, but I I know I joined. Actually, one of the reasons I joined Bigger City was, um, that was one of the one of the changes for me was embracing um, the fact that I was a bigger guy. Mm -hmm. um so uh and like i needed to i knew that i was that i would that people would find me attractive and i had a potential of finding someone else attractive that might normally not i would not have been interested in before um so i joined because and i i think i left because i can't remember why i deleted my profile i think it was because um I wasn't getting, I wasn't engaging with it anymore. Like that was usually what it is. Like I, I wasn't getting on there at all or if, as much anymore. So I just decided to delete it. Like I, when I went on to, I normally used to, I used to use um, Firefox. So I have saved in my, um, you know, passwords. I have a profile name and password it doesn't work. So I'm assuming my profile has been deleted. But if you two are in there, but I'll I, just check. I just recently logged back into it. Well, no, I've had it a couple of times where I've logged back into it. Also for the fact that you can use your biggest city login on bulkmail.com. Mm -hmm. Although bulkmail needs, yeah. needs an update. <laughs> yeah. So I just sent into our host chat. I just sent my old profile name. I don't know if you'll find it, but if it's deleted, then I'm, that'll. If you can't find it, then I, that means definitely that it was deleted, which I'm kind of happy for because I can't get back into it. If I recall, yeah, you don't exist. Um, but, at least not under that name. If I recall, <laughs> within the past, I want to say five to six years, they did an overhaul. There was there was something that I remember them sending an email and being like, hey, we're making big updates, blah, 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 blah. And there was something about, like, you had to log in and, like, check a box maybe or something. I don't know. Yeah. Or, like, to keep your profile active, like, to have it sent over to the new version mm -hmm. or, like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because anyways. it looks a lot different than what it used to look like. Oh, I'm sure it does. Yeah, yeah. That's so weird. Anyway. 
random aside, this I, I realized I hadn't. Let me jump back on, on there. I haven't been in there for a while just to see what's going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, on Bigger City, I haven't been on there in years. Mm-hmm. Anywho, um, <laughs> random aside, tangent as we go. Um, I do think, but it's also for me changed my taste um, has been um, Letter King community, mm-hmm. being a part of that and doing the things there. Um, okay. um, weirdly enough, or not weirdly enough, I shouldn't say weirdly, um, oftentimes play is not sexual. Um, sometimes it's about the the dynamic and the power exchange and those kind of things. Mm-hmm. So certain images are interesting to me because of what I'm seeing or what I'm um, getting out of the out of it. So um, that has changed in some ways some of the guys that I would be interested in. Um, just a random aside, I was just at IML and um, got to experience someone who would normally not be my type, but um, I was invited to a room where a guy was essentially blindfolded and and, um, bound. Wow, words, hard. Um, Not my usual type of guy, but the idea of the scene was that he wouldn't know how many people were in this room that were mm-hmm. engaging with him, were you know touching him and doing things with him. He had a he had a he had a sir or a dom there that was sort of the you know dungeon master of the space, so that if you know they were there to make sure everything was legit. But I, I found myself it, a guy that I normally wouldn't have been attracted to. I was very attracted to him because of the submission, as it were. Hmm. A guy that I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't have hit my, you know, tripped my trigger if I had saw them in passing, but mm-hmm. knowing that other aspect of them made them more interesting. It could have been partly because of the scene. Like also what that. What was happening. Uh, but, yeah. So the scene kind of turned you on, which allowed you to be turned on like if you met this guy outside of that scene mm-hmm. would you have the same reaction i don't know yeah. right right that's a little bit of the question like even if you already knew about the scene so yeah i mean you don't know maybe, maybe. yeah but maybe that's one of the factors that might might be part of it is just the scene was hot and because the scene was hot your libido was turned off <laughs> right that's fair i i i also learned have learned that uh i like being bound i yeah. i am mostly on the more of the sub side of things also for those people who don't know Subs aren't always bottoms. That part right there. That part it's true. right there. It's I very just, fucking true. I just shared something in the past day about a guy who was like wanting a subby top. And um, honestly, I thought of you, Jeff, not like you and him. I just meant right, like, right, 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 because right. they yeah. posted it because they think you're the first person that I ever heard verbalize that like kind of self-label and or like use that language and um Mm -hmm. i was like right um and i think that's another thing that's that's happened for us over the years is that the language has expanded greatly and so when we were discovering ourselves and figuring out what we liked or what drew our attention what we were interested in we didn't have words for it right like i never in a million years thought in the late eighties into the nineties that I would have been like talking about daddies. Like (laughs) 
that that wouldn't have been a thing to say because I probably would have been all skeezed out about it because I would have taken it in a very like honest, like common defined, you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And now I look at, you know, things posted on media and profiles and it kills me because these like late 20 somethings, early 30s are like claiming the label of daddy. And I'm like, really? And, no. and there's a part of me that like I have to check myself and be like, OK, listen, this is their gig. Like they're that's them making that choice. I would right. not necessarily recognize that like yeah. for them based on just some preliminary things. And yet. If I wanted to think about it in terms of age. It is quite possible you know, like, and I think that's the thing that gets a little convoluted about that label is people being interested in daddies, like people who have actually had children versus like that kind of personality, you know, that fatherly nurturing kind of concept. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and I think uh, for the longest time, and this is where where my cases have brought in in this entire time is um, because I was along the lines of wanting somebody that was older. It didn't necessarily have to be a lot older, but, but older than I was. Um, so, so like uh, Carl, when I moved down to Austin for, uh, he was 12 years older than I was, I think. But at that time, I was in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. so, and he was in his 30s. So, <clears throat> so he, was, he was older, but kind of still within that range of not being extremely yeah. older. And I still yeah. find older men attractive, but um, especially as I've gotten older, I've been looking at myself, especially considering I've been getting this nice gray beard. Um, also kind of considering myself a daddy, so, so getting even more attracted to the younger. So age, age has never really been a thing for me, really. Um, it, it really just is what I find attractive is just what I find attractive. And if they're younger and I find them attractive, great. If they're older, I find them attractive. Great. Um, so it it really kind of doesn't matter their age at that point. But I think I was still when I was younger, about twenty years ago, I was feeling more of more attracted to the older than I did the younger. So <laughs> plus I was twenty years ago, I was awfully close to the age of consent in the United States. So being attracted to somebody younger well there was not much room there you know i've got plenty right. of room right true. true and i think that's also a thing too um as we've gotten older i think we saw in what we were attracted to we're now seeing in ourselves mm -hmm. if that makes sense so we it makes sense for us that some guys that are young that were are younger than us are now being interested in us and for me it's taking because as i said i'm normally in, into older guys but i'm seeing the beauty and benefit of finding younger than me attractive and because it's sort of um sounds bad but paying the dues as it were because if it wasn't for the older men in my life when I was younger mm. that helped me, right. I wouldn't be where I am. So I should potentially do that to others now. Um, not that that's happening all the time, but just it gives me a moment of pause when someone younger than me hits me up. Although I will say this much, y'all. Like if you are young, young, if you're hitting someone up who is older than you, don't immediately go for daddy because I do not identify as a daddy. 
Not yet, anyway. I'll take uh, all your daddies. I'll, I'll, <laughs> it, I, I am okay with you calling me daddy. Yeah. Just as long as I, I get am, to call you son. Yeah. I am not as oh, much. Boy. I think in a in a scene that we've talked about and agreed on and consented into then, but to to call me it out the gate, and no. Um, cause for me again, daddy is also a, one of the terms of respect in my community. So, mm -hmm. um, I don't always want to be called that. Um, and maybe I'm still holding on to the fact that I'm, I want to still be a little younger than I actually am. Like maybe, maybe just a little bit. That's fair. I can understand that. Yeah. So Gary, how about you? You haven't answered the, the question yet. Um, so, uh, yes, men who turned my head when I was like much younger still turn my head now. In that, that there's a certain aesthetic, there's a certain, um, like, there's something about. So I've, it took, it's taken decades for me to like hone in on this. But if you are taller than me, broader shoulder than me and like built like a linebacker or bigger, I will probably like pay attention to you <laughs> because that was just something that happened within like my, like being a younger guy that like really, I don't know, was appealing to me. Um, and so that, kind of hasn't changed. I figured out other things along the way, like any guy that has a widow's peak, um, that is appealing to me. There's just something very specific about it. And I don't hmm. seek it out, but every once in a blue moon, I'll be like, why, why is that, why is that guy so attractive? Like, and I'm like, is it his eyes? Is it his beard? Is it his facial hair? Like, is it like his cheek structure or something? And invariably, if I think about it long enough and I'm like, oh, right. Widow's peak. Like it's so <laughs> yeah. specific. It is very specific that it hits me a certain way that it doesn't with other guys. And I'm not, and that's not to say I don't find other guys like attractive without one. It's just a particular thing that kind of like, like hits me in a certain yeah, way. Um, yeah. Like guys with shorter hair, um, something that's closer to like a flat top, will kind of get my attention. Um, and so, like, it's funny, because I was thinking about this as I was putting this together. Like, what is, like, who were the epitome of things that, like, attract, like attracted me? Um, there is one celebrity entertainer that has always gotten my attention. And then when that motherfucker grew a goatee, it was over. And I was like, I don't care if you're married. I don't care if you got kids. And then you got divorced and then you got remarried. And I was mad about that. I was like, you is fine. You is talented. And I'm not asking for forever. I'm just asking for like a little while. Um, <laughs> and so and it's ironic. <laughs> what I'm saying is, it's the 2020s, baby. Like you can have an open relationship. We can be polyamorous. Like that, that, that's totally a thing, and it's more acceptable now than it ever has been. So, like, and I don't, and I don't have to tell nobody nothing. Like I wouldn't even tell the two of you if that was a thing. I'd be like, I, I can keep it on the DL. Like I don't, I don't need to uh -huh. tell nobody nothing. Right. Take that to my grave. Here, here. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. Uh, who was it? Who who is it? Who is it? Have you said it? You didn't say it. I don't remember. Oh, I, it. It. <laughs> I know David's been like with the T. With the T. Uh, they are a musical artist. I was gonna say hey, the names, genre. dear. Come on. <laughs> they've across. They've crossed a bunch. Of, they've crossed a couple of genres. Um, it's not Mister Yearwood, is it? What's that? It's not Mister yes! Yearwood. <laughs> That's so funny the way you phrased it. Oh, it's oh no, no. I heard that episode of, oh, wait, wait, don't tell me. <laughs> it's Garth Brooks. David seems so confused. Oh, okay. He, he remarried 
he divorced his wife and he married Trisha Yearwood. Got it. So he's sometimes referred to as Mr. Yearwood. Um, he was on he was on Kelly Clarkson's talk show in the past year, and I was like, "Yep," and still got it. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> still a sexy motherfucker. Um, I had a poster of him in my bedroom when I was younger. Um, yeah, like. Him in them jeans. That was a problem for me. Uh, yeah. He's and, there's and that was about probably, him. Oh, it, I agree with you well, that, I'm wholeheartedly on that all that. That was the beginning of the thick thigh thing for me. That was another thing. Like like guys who have like broad shoulders, but like are kind of thick throughout the body, like that's a whole thing. And what I've realized is is like like they have a build about them that has like strength. So you're saying you like stocky mm. dudes. Yeah. I mean, like, that's just kind of a thing that I've always known is, like, if you are, like, offense, football, slash rugby, like, that will that will turn my eye, that will catch my attention, all that kind of jazz. Um, but over time... Any, any line men work. Over time, I have come to realize that Yes, I, I definitely find myself much more attracted now than I was when I was, like, much younger to men with a lot of, like, gray and or silver white hair um, in their facial hair or their, like, hair on the top of their head. And I think that's just because I've aged. So when I was in my 20s, I didn't want to date anybody in my 20s. I was an absolute jerk about it. Like, I kind of created a rule. And I was like, wow. you sure enough. I do not have time for your shenanigans and your bullshit. And you're like, ah, and all your craziness and your irresponsibility and not having your shit together and like not being able to pay your bills and looking for somebody who like was going to take care of you. So peace out y'all. Um, that's how I was. Like, I really, like I was, really, like, I, um, I always wanted somebody who was going to be at least 30. Like, like that was just kind of the way I was. I didn't, I don't think I, I don't think I put that in profiles. I don't think I said that out loud. It was just a thing that I knew. Like it was going to take somebody really goddamn special to have their life together in a way that was going to impress me if they were close to my age, like, or just a little older. Someone younger than me was never probably going to be a thing. Mm. And then it wasn't until probably my late thirties into my forties that I found myself being much more comfortable with someone around my age. And now, <laughs> this past year, these past eight months, um, oh yeah, seven mm-hmm. months roughly, I have found myself thinking very much more about like where I am now and what what is to come of my life, and how there are certain things that I want. And so, seeing guys with profiles and stuff who are like, "I'm retired" or "I'm semi-retired" or this and that. I'm like, okay, like, I see you like that. That's, that's something I wouldn't have thought about before. That's something I wouldn't have, Mm. but that's not necessarily a quality that attracts me to them. That just happens to be something about them. That kind of like Jeff is like icing on the cake. Like, oh, like, not only are you attractive and do, do I find myself like, wanting to be like around you in your space or with you or, or, you know, physically intimate. Like there's also other components about you. Like I read a, a profile just this weekend that I was really taken by this guy. Who, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to describe anything that'll like uh, describe him specifically, but he was like, Hey, I recently got out of a long relationship. Like I'm finding myself, I'm figuring some things out, won't, so on and so forth. That wrote like, it reminded me of like the old days when you read profiles and there was paragraphs and that doesn't seem to happen as much anymore. I think everybody's just kind of like, you know, stats and mm-hmm. like, you know, just yeah. a couple of things and like, and they hit it and quit it kind of like in their, in their description. And this was a lot more like, this is what I like to do. This is the stuff I'm kind of interested in. This is sort of what I'm looking for. Like, and I, I almost sent them a message just to simply say, Hey, I really liked your profile that you took the time to kind of put stuff out there and give people an idea of what, who you are and what you're interested in. Speaking of which, um, speaking of profiles, please put something in it. Don't just leave everything as like, ask me or I'll tell you later. 
<laughs> just put something in there, even if it's a sentence or two. It doesn't have to be over elaborate or something. Just give me an idea of what you're about. Come on. And at least have a picture or two. It doesn't even have to be a full on dude. And it doesn't even have to be necessarily your face if you, you're trying to be ooh, discreet or something. Um, it's fine. Just give me something to work off. I'm, and, and for those other people, read profiles for Christ's sakes. People that also put that. something there, put effort into it. Uh, also, those people who do, TLDR, please. Just start it off with the short summary and then if you want to expand just let us be able to read like the first few sentences and then and get the gist of it and then you can be more expansive about it but don't write a novel please right i do appreciate uh the charts like when you do those tests and like the the bdsm te tests i think we did at one point in time from the where where it was like, oh, I'm looking at, at the at the result that I put in one of my profiles here. Hold on. That might be something to do because I don't know if we've done that for the I'm show. Sure, oh yeah, I had like 100% rope bunny, 97% brat, 82% submissive, 80% non monogamous, mm -hmm. 77 primal prey. Uh, 67 equally of where an exhibitionist, a 59% switch, which seems appropriate being really close to 50%. 50% vanilla? I thought it was more vanilla than this test gave me for. Uh, 48% experimentalist. Hmm. Yes, Payson, Neat. don't write a novel. I don't mind I don't mind a novel. However, um make sure you have it, a TLDR. It, 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 okay, well, I don't no, necessarily need a TLDR. Need I don't a need TLDR a TLDR. TLDR. That get me interested and then maybe I'll read the rest, but <laughs> I I don't need a TLDR. I'm going to read or if nothing else skim through what you have written down because normally I can get what I if I'm interested or not through looking through some of the stuff you write and if you've written a novel um, I'm, I'm I will admit I'm probably less likely to engage with it fully it doesn't mean I won't engage like don't get me wrong but it's going to take me a while to get through it before I say oh let me go talk to this person or not um but i do want some information i agree with, with that i can't i can't go on your stats alone and i also can't go on just your picture alone if you want Im immediate carnal like gut reaction to just a picture fine then that's what you're going to get But if you want, like, actual interest or someone to to engage with you and talk with you and have a conversation with you, then <laughs> you're going to need to have a little bit more. And the apps will send you a look, will send you a growl, will send you a, send you a, a, a flirt, will send you an oink, depending on where, what app it is. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll send you a quick little thing. If there's like immediate, like your picture is attractive enough, but so in the live chat, um, Payson Harris just said, "quote Don't write a novel." End quote. And they wrote, "Fuck my drag, eh?" <laughs> so the reason why I'm laughing is, is I'm pretty sure Pay Payson is an author and is writing a book. <laughs> If you're writing an actual book for the purpose of publishing, that's one thing. I'm talking about in a profile. It's not the place where you write a novel. I, the, the, the actual writing a novel goes somewhere else. Also, I only got the don't write a novel. I don't see anything. In the chat. 
I just think it's funny. I just I just appreciated that. Um, duly noted. We'll we'll do a future show. We'll do the BDSM test. Actually, I'm curious. Maybe I'll reach out and see if Tony's available mm. uh, to come on. I'd like his insight on that. Anyways, more to come on that later. Uh, that's what he said. But I'll boom. Anyways, so. So yeah, we can I mean, ask him right now. He was in the chat in the uh, Telegram chat. So it might have been. There you go. Meanwhile, Rugger's setting me up with his friends, who are apparently Don Don Bottoms. So, so Payson says I've written a couple of novels and just signed an NDA, but my most recent one. Ooh, congrats! Also, my profiles are longer than my books. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I guess Jeff will be reading them, but that's okay. Can you just put like the summary? You know what the, the, the <laughs> thing that's put on the give back of the, the book. Give us the book know, jacket version, like yeah, yeah. You, give me, give me, give me what's on the jacket because you know sometimes you read that first to determine if you're enticed to read the rest. Right, that's all I'm right, saying. Right. So you no, can fair. write a novel. It's just make sure that there's something there to entice me to actually read it. Right. No, that makes sense. Um. Yeah, so in, in wrapping up, like, I think my taste, my tastes have changed in that, like, I've matured with with my age and recognized that. Um, I guess, like, when I was younger, I never would have thought somebody beyond 15 to 20 years ahead of me was of interest. Mm. And that probably still kind of holds true in a way. Mm hmm. And I and I'm I'm fudging on that because I'm like I can always I, I'm open to an opportunity I'm not like gonna shut that down, right? Like for me, more than ever now, I think personality chemistry is going to be a huge piece. Like, yeah, how do how do we click? How do we get along? What is stuff like? Um, and and there is a part of me that has grown concerned that the older I get, the more difficult this will be for me. Like a part of me is like, I will probably be much more comfortable in my skin, which is better for me and better for a future relationship. But then at the same time, I'm like, oh, I've been alone for so long that I could find it being very challenging to like want to give part of my life to be with another person in some capacity because I'm so used to having like my own time be mine and I do whatever I want with it. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, I think that's. That is that is fair in that way. Um, I mean, there are definitely some things trope wise from mm -hmm. the media of our youth that still like grab my attention now. Like a a man in boots will always start to get my attention. A man in uh, full leather uh, will probably get my attention. Um, if he's wearing it in the middle of the summer, I'm gonna be like, God. Damn, he's probably roasting. Uh, but <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm just Side saying. Note, full shade, full tea. <laughs> Yesterday was Pride here in Cincinnati. It was 97 degrees outside, and one oh, of the guys, if you saw my pictures on, if you saw my picture on Facebook, he wasn't in full leather. I mean, he had sleeves cut off, but leather pants and a leather like shirt type thing, and boots. No, sir. No. Uh. 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 Mm. -mm. Oh. No. How? How? Like, well, if yeah. you're smart and you've learned something from the cosplay slash furry community, <laughs> you will have put like cool water packs into your into your like leather, like underneath your leather somehow with an extra barrier to not damage it to keep you cool in in the hot weather. But that's going above and beyond. And that's a lot uh -huh. of like investment. Yeah. Um, yeah. On top of the cow, yeah. so yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, that is. He, Anyways, he might might like being all all sweaty and musky. I mean, maybe. But, but right, that's, there's also that. But there's still like you. Mm, yeah. It yeah. was too hot for that there's, shit. I'm sorry. There's a lot of things that are like well, when it comes to to the men, especially when you're you're being attracted to a variety. Is there's always the plus, the the additional the additional things that that turn you on that might counteract something that you wouldn't normally i'm going to put in quotes uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. count as being being attractive like you were talking about the widow's feet the boots the, the, the leather that sort of thing um 
it, it, uh, me, it's pretty much if they're bald. They got bald, they're bald belly and they've got a puppy with them, meaning the actual dog puppy. Um, right. And maybe maybe some food. I mean, you're you're starting to get to my heart right there because I always say the way to my my heart is through food and puppies. Right, and I will say this: like some things have been pretty much a constant. Like things that appeal to me as an interest, if they appeal to you, that like also like increases the the attractiveness. Liking to travel, being interested in food, being interested in entertainment, um, right. being a little bit of an intellectual thinker. Um, like knowing and, and discovering over the past couple of years about like being Demi, I figured out like, I got to be stimulated. Like there has to be something synaptically happening that I feel compelled to be interested. And that's one of the things I've really started to recognize of late is like, I go on the apps and stuff and like, oh, and that's another thing that has not changed about me. I'm still a voyeur. Um, like <laughs> I'm just going to own it. Like, and I think like that's a big deal for me in that, you know, s seeing and knowing people that are doing things or whatever is very, you know, kind of titillating or interesting or intriguing. Right. But like to be involved and actually do it, I don't know. Like and so that's that's another thing about, you know. Uh, the interest in, in guys is like. I I don't really get attracted to guys or have an interest, never have in people who are show offs. Because to me, that, like, gets too borderline with, like, a pompous, like, self-absorbed kind of nature. Like, that has always been a turnoff, still is a turnoff to this day. Um, and that's something I had to kind of work through a little bit and discover about, like, the BDSM and kink communities is that not all doms are dickheads. Um, like, that was an outside perspective that I had was that, you know, all doms were just douchebags because they, you know, were full of themselves because they were the top or whatever. Oh, and, and I had to like kind of learn like, no, like some of them, it is a personification. Some of them, it's kind of role play in a character mm -hmm. way. And that isn't necessarily it. And it took me meeting some tops who are, um, I don't know if this is the right term, soft doms. Like, yeah, that's right. That's the term. Like that are not really like harsh uh, yeah, or hard, I guess. And I was like, oh, okay. Like that's very intriguing to me, um, yeah, in that essence. A, so, the, 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 you need to match the intensity of what your partner is enjoying, because if you're being too intense, that's going to be a turnoff. Well, and hopefully, like I had to learn, you know, from being around kink and leather folk, you know, and that like there there needs to be communication, and hopefully, you've discussed this stuff ahead of time so you know right. what both parties are looking for and are interested in to get out of it. So you, you know that there's probably a line somewhere and you figured out like how to address when you approach that line. So you don't go over it, like, and it doesn't turn the scene sour um, for folks that are involved in that way. Um, also, if people are observing like the respect of that, um, there was just a lot that I ended up learning when I was like in my thirties that, I'm very, very grateful for. Um, and I think made good impressions on me. And so that's stuff that I that I carry forward now that I wouldn't have had in my 20s by any means. Like, even if it was, like, possibly, you know, if I saw... It's funny because <laughs> when I was in my 20s, I thought biker men were pretty hot. Like, but what I realized <laughs> is, is I, I was buying into the trope and the model and the idea of, like, this very butch, like, like you know muscly bearded tatted like cigar yeah. smoking guess i know some of you out there are liking this uh you know kind of personification and since then i've met some bikers and some of them are the biggest goddamn teddy bears like just so <laughs> soft and not like yeah. menacing they just kind of look that way um i think that's and, more and, the norm well, I mean, in a way that, like, you you meet them and you get to talk to them and you're like, oh, man, you're not anything like that. <laughs> um, Fantasy versus reality. That part. That part. Right? Right. So, yeah, I think some of those things have changed. But I know definitively, you know, like, like I was saying about some of the tropes, like, once in a blue moon, I will see somebody, like, wear throwback clothes. 
So mm-hmm. like someone will wear the short shorts, the gym, like the gym short shorts with the split on the side from like back in the like eighties. Mm-hmm. If you know, you know, yeah. um, it just takes that and a tank top and a whistle and a ball cap and like some calf high white socks and some sneakers. And you are totally giving coach gym teacher vibes. For, and for that those who, was the thing. For those who don't know, the split that we're referring to is only like one or two inches. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. like it's... all the way up the side. Although there are some like that out there, but that's for the, that's, the more. That's a like... different that that's that's the, that's the yeah that's, yeah, that's, that's like when you're you're much different place that's, that's when you're actually fucking like that i was gonna say that's <laughs> that's go boy territory like that's yeah. that's a that's mm-hmm. a different thing um yeah, yeah yeah no but i mean so there are some things that like you know you see that every now and then you're kind of like oh, all right that's, mm-hmm, that's that's the thing like it's still so i think that like i think kind of like all of us were saying like yes some of it from then still is relevant now, but we've also adapted with time and just like our age and, and our place in it in that case. I right. I remember so, lusting yeah. over uh, my uh, ninth grade, ninth or 10th, maybe it was 10th grade, uh, social studies teacher who was one of the football coaches. Oh, the stories I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> my first, my first male teacher crush was elementary school gym teacher like Mm. fifth sixth grade he was probably genetically swedish um like thick muscle build had the magnum pi thick stash but he was like sandy blonde um and tanned really well and had crystal blue eyes like he just there was just something about him that was a thing, um, which yeah. also made like that whole time of my life, like with gym class, very awkward. Um, yeah. And so for sure, like there's, there's certain things of that caliber and that style that are, that are still a thing now. So, yeah. And I find it interesting because there's also a part of me that wonders like, will today's younger generation go through the same thing that we will? Like, will they, as they age, like have these like kind of nostalgia callbacks and interest and carry them forward? Or will they also kind of change with time? I know for a long time when I was in my thirties and I would hear like younger individuals who were like 20 or, or 18 or 19 and they'd be like, and eh, it's only man hit on me. And I would, I would always be like, you best shut up. Cause one day you're going to be that old man. So that the, part you, you watch yourself. Um, in <laughs> fact, very much David, it's fact. So, you know, I, I, I knew then, like, I always had a respect for my elders. Like, I'm an only child. I was around adults mm-hmm. so much, like, throughout my youth um, that that was not a surprise to me that I acclimated in that direction naturally. Right. Um, so that was, that was just kind of a thing for me that that, that, that kind of was the case. And I think that also partly into, like, why I said, like, when I was in my 20s, I was like, I don't want nobody around my age. I was like, you are all idiots. Like, I just <laughs> could not tolerate hardly anybody kind of had their shit together and had their life together. And anybody that did, I was sort of annoyed with in the way that I felt like they were they were like they carried themselves above. Mm. So, like, well, they had their life together. They just felt like like they couldn't be bothered. Shit didn't stink. Right. And that and that really kind of bothered me because I was like. Oh, okay. So you've got your life all figured out and you got your shit together, but like you're still kind of a douchebag. <laughs> so <laughs> there's that. Lord. There's that. <sighs> all right. I will accept anyone who's young, dumb, full of cum. Eh. No, almost. Eh. I have a reset stage. Yeah. I haven't either. <laughs> Trust me, I was at IML. There were so many opportunities. Like, no. <laughs> I'm good. Thanks. Right now, I am itching. <laughs> uh, Jeff, we should probably find you a free clinic nearby. <laughs> that checked out. Not mm, that type of itch. Not that kind of itch. <laughs> okay. Just saying. I just, just need to. 
Really? I, huh? In the middle of our podcast? What? <laughs> I just looked at the Telegram chat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Like, really? Well, what? well, it all started. Well, first off, uh, Cub, Cubs has uh, had FDU and put Who's Hungry for Menzes? And he goes, Menzes? Not Cubses? Oh. And yeah. then we were having our, 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 our it, we were talking something about like that Dom Tops exist. Or some tops exist, and I remember yes, I a meme in in my uh, gamer Discord where somebody had had put, "Are you really about him? Or are you overwhelmed by having having to make a thousand choices every day in a in an in infinitely complex society where you can't afford to survive, much less thrive, and you no longer want to make decisions and simply want to be told what to do?" And I'm like, "Would they?" I don't entirely agree with that. I'm like, well, that's because sometimes bombs are kind of like that too. So, yeah. Uh, and then uh, I also replied to Cubs is saying, well, Cubs is his men's, is, so yes. Right, right. Uh, Rugger mentioned that, well, if, there, if that were true, there would be as many sub tops as there were sub bottoms, but. It, some of my friends are Dom Bottoms and their attempts to find some tops are difficult. Uh, I just pointed out that I'm a sub first top and he said I'll, he'll send his friends his way. And then he's just Aww. extract uh, Damon with a uh, gif of Beverly Crusher. Yeah, I, I, I caught up on that. All right. So anything else as we wrap up? Uh, nope. Uh, I think I'm good. I think we're good. Um, uh, single gay male uh, currently looking uh, for sexual perverts. Yes. Your taste may change. Your taste may differ depending on what you're doing <clears throat> as you grow, as you change. It's just the way it is. I mean, taste buds, even your like, like taste in foods change over time. So true. True, true, true. Yeah. Things I didn't like when I was younger that I grew to like, I still don't like seafood. Yes. No red lobster for you. No red lobster for a bunch of people. They closed a whole bunch of stores. Uh, I, filing I, bankruptcy. I was, yeah, I was just going to get to that. But... I'll take some of their uh, cheddar beef biscuits as well. Those sound delicious. You can make them at home. They have a mix but and if everything. I don't want to work. <laughs> all right. Just, I was just saying right. what it was there. That's all that's, I was saying. That, that's for post show. That's being the thing. Anyways, what are your tapes and menses? Uh, have they changed over time? Uh, are you a youngin and an, are you agreeing with the fact that we're changing things? That, that your tastes may change as you grow older? You'll accept more people. You will understand. As I said, even I have grown in that. But if anything, consent is my floor plan. Let us know about your taste and What turns you on? <laughs> you can do that in plenty of ways. You can pop over to our website, CubsOutline.com. Shoot us an email at CubsOutline at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail sexy or otherwise at 361 we'll talk or comment to us on one of our social media outlets at uh, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud, the appropriate place of the URL. You can join our top entourage chat where uh, currently there is a uh, gif of Beverly Crusher wagging his dick. That's at bit.ly slash telegram dash col. You can find out when we're planning on recording these shows, but through our Google Calendar at bit.ly slash calendar col dash col. Uh, you can get various coutumons, such as a just a logo shirt. Uh, you can get a Slobby Bottom 23 shirt. We haven't mentioned that one in a long, long time. Gary's right. 
Uh, I've got a Consentus Marine Four Play shirt on. You got it in those in many different styles. We've also got plenty of other accoutrements. One thing that I've been using more often than before, um, a nice handy towel. We have an entire uh, towel set available too, so <laughs> just just saying. Uh, mugs, etc. You got a whole bunch of that over on Zazzle of Zazzle.com slash cut that loud. Some of those designs, such as the consensus by four play design, was designed by Smashy. You can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash slash smashy the bear. Please support our designer. He deserves it. You can, find, you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash cubs out loud and get the free post and post show and pre show if you're not watching it live. You can also send us a donation at paypal.me slash comes out loud. You can also please rate us and review us over on the podcasting platforms of your choice, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and uh, Amazon Audible, I think. You can find me anywhere on the internet as Box Set Box, Puppy Box, Cub Box, something or other. I'm probably listing myself as uh, Want Sex Now. Damn. Oh, God. Wow. If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at theatercub79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79 on most very related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umber on Twitter or pup umber79 on Blue Sky. Those are not safe for work. But the safe for work stuff, you can find me at DMAGamer79 on TikTok or Twitter. Gary? If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And with that, Daddy's in heat. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all. Bye. <laughs>